In this video we will learn how to read pedigrees and to test connected hypotheses of inheritance. Pedigrees are graphical representations of families. In this example a male represented by a square and a female represented by a circle have two children, a male and a female, in order of birth. The female is affected by a condition, often a pathological one, as symbolized by a field shape. Matings are represented by direct lines joining two shapes. We wish to identify the mode of inheritance of this condition and the relevant genotypes. In this case, neither parent is affected. Let's consider the possible explanations, that is, our hypothesis. The first explanation is that the condition is autosomal dominant. Autosomal refers to any chromosome not involved in sex. Let's hypothesize that the affected individual has a big D little d genotype. It follows that at least one parent should carry a big D allele and display the same condition. Thus, we can rule out this explanation. The next hypothesis is autosomal recessive. The affected daughter is little d little d. The brother could be big D, little d, or big D, big d, and each parent must be big D, little d. The hypothesis fits the data. Next, let's consider X-link dominant. This does not fit because neither parent is affected. How about X-linked recessive? The affected daughter would be X little d homozygous and should have inherited the condition from the father. If the father had X little d, it would be affected. Therefore, we can rule this out. The last hypothesis is of Y linked inheritance. Males should be affected. Thus, we rule it out. In conclusion, we have been able to come up with a compelling hypothesis just from the phenotype of four related individuals. Pedigrees can use additional symbols. The most common are illustrated here. To familiarize ourselves further with pedigrees, let's consider the mode of inheritance of a dominant condition. Here, an affected mother and her healthy husband have five kids. What can we expect? Let's assign the parental genotypes as follows. Big D, little d for the mother. Little d, little d for the father. Maternal heterozygosity is assumed in the lack of other information based on the fact that most genetic conditions are rare. To facilitate discussion, the generations are labeled with Roman numerals and the individuals with Arabic numerals. Each child has a 50% chance of inheriting the disease allele. Therefore, the chance that all children are unaffected is 0.5 exponential 5 or 3%. In such cases, a more common outcome is that two or three children are affected. An expanded tree, including four generations, may look like this. Importantly, Dominant conditions do not skip generations if the condition is fully penetrant, that is, if it is manifested in all carriers of the big D alleles. Next, let's consider another tree. The condition manifested by great grandma skips two generations. It cannot be dominant. Also, since it is ancestral, it is not the result of a new mutation appearing in generation 3 or 4. A key event here is the marriage between cousins, a consanguineous mating leading to inbreeding. Let's assign the grandparents big D, big D and little d, little d genotypes respectively. The two cousins who married must have been carriers, that is, they had big D, little d genotype. So did individuals 2, 2 and 2, 4. 
following the type of reasoning demonstrated previously and skipping the details, we can conclude that this is a likely case of autosomal recessive. Now, here is an interesting question. What is the probability that individual 4-5 is a carrier? We may be tempted to answer one half or two fourths because heterozygotes are expected in that ratio from the mating of two heterozygotes. We would be wrong. We must factor in our calculation that 4-5 is not affected. Therefore, we can rule out the little d, little d genotype and he must be either big D, little d, or big D, big D. This makes his chance to be a carrier 2 out of 3. Let's look at another pedigree, where all affected individuals are males and generations are skipped. The condition cannot be Y-linked because individual 2, 6 is unaffected. Let's consider instead X-linked recessive as a possibility. Male 4, 2 inherited his X little d from heterozygous mom, who in turn inherited it from her dad, and so on. The rest of the pedigree displays inheritance patterns consistent with this hypothesis. Last, let's look at this pedigree. It displays a pattern of no generation skipping, suggesting that the condition is dominant. There is no obvious sex bias. Grey grandma, who is affected, could be big D, big D, or big D, little d. The latter is more likely since we favor the assumption that the condition is rare. In the next generations, all affected individuals fit the heterozygous big D, little d state. We conclude that autosomal dominant is a satisfactory explanation. In summary, a pedigree provides a convenient way to display clinical observations and to organize hypotheses. These must be considered methodically one after the other. It is advantageous to first evaluate recessivity versus dominance, then to examine autosomal versus sex-linked inheritance. In any case, any satisfactory hypothesis must be consistent with all the data.